Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so today I'm going to be smoking a cigarette in a smashed up, abandoned, 40-year-old postal Jeep. In specific today, I'm going to be smoking a cigarette in the smashed up, abandoned, 40-year-old postal Jeep that is behind me right here. But why do I want to make this video today? Well, reason number one is just simply because I am a fan of postal Jeeps. I like postal Jeeps quite a bit. And so as such, I've been curious to find out just how good or just how bad they actually are to smoke cigarettes in. And I'm thinking should be a little bit more of an interesting experience. Not because, since this is a postal Jeep, the driver's side is on the right hand side. So it should provide a different experience than most cars I've ever smoked in in the past. That is reason number one why I am excited to make this video. Reason number two is a little bit more of a sad reason in all honesty, because this video in part is meant to be a little bit of a send off to this Jeep. As in my personal opinion, it's probably gonna get crushed or sold off or destroyed sometime in the future. This Jeep right here has been abandoned at a park near me for the last six to eight months now. It is in the possession of the park. They got donated it by a restaurant slash like bakery that used this truck as an advertising platform for years and years. But the park was not uh, complicit in the donation. I'm not really sure if that's the right way of putting it. They did not ask for the donation. The restaurant literally just ditched it and said, it's yours now, here's the title. And so now the park owns it. And I've talked to some of the people who work at the park I'm at right now, the park where this Jeep is abandoned at. And I asked what their plans were for this Jeep and they didn't really have any plans for this Jeep. It's just gonna sit here abandoned until they figure out what to do with it. And in all honesty, when they do figure out what to do with it, it wouldn't surprise me if they just figure they should crush it because it's not in very good condition in all honesty. Since sitting here for the last six to eight months, some not so nice people have come and smashed all the glass out of this car. And so as such, every time it's been raining, the rain has been going inside the Jeep. This Jeep is also quite rusty, if I do say so myself. The actual frame itself is not in bad condition, but the outside, there's a lot of surface rust and that surface rust is really starting to crack and whatnot. It's really not in good shape. I don't even know if this Jeep is restorable in all honesty. All of the mechanical components are still there. It just looks like it hasn't run in literally years. While I'd love to try to take this Jeep on as a restoration project or something like that, I don't have enough time, patience, space, or money to get it going. And so as such, it's just not feasible for me. And I don't think the park that this Jeep is abandoned at cares enough about it to try to get it to run either. And so as such, if I had to guess, it's probably just going to end up in the crusher as much as I hate to admit it. And so as such, that's why I'm calling this video a little bit of a send off today, because this Jeep might not exist for much longer. It's had a good run, 40 years. That's pretty good, but it might not exist for much longer. And so as such, well, I want to give it a little bit of a send off today. I want to talk a little bit about what it is, and I want to show you guys all the quirks and features of it. And then after that, I'm thinking I should probably go ahead and get the door all opened up and I should probably go ahead and actually get to smoking a cigarette inside a smashed up abandoned 40 year old postal Jeep. And then after that, I should probably end the video right there and give it a final send off. But first off, as said, we got to talk about what this Jeep actually is before I go ahead and cover the quirks and features of the Jeep. And before I go ahead and actually smoke a cigarette inside this Jeep right here as well. So first off, let's go ahead and talk about what this is. This is an old United States rural mail carrier. Get my words just a little bit jumbled up. This is an old United States rural mail... <laughs> I'm getting my words all jumbled up. But, but, what was I trying to say? This Jeep right here in front of me is an old United States rural mail carrier postal Jeep. It was made by AM General who made postal Jeeps from 1971 to 1984, making this Jeep right here just about 40 years old, if not over 40 years old. And we can see that this Jeep was made by AM General due to the 
logo on the back just says AM General right there. Now, of course, Postal Jeeps have been around for a lot longer than 1971 to 1984. They were made, I want to say, through the 50s, through the 1980s for about 30 years, almost unchanged, which is pretty wild if I do say so myself. But this one right here is an AM General made one, and so as such, must have been made sometime between 1971 and 1984, unless I am incorrect. And I believe the designation code for this Jeep would be DJ5 or DJ7. Not exactly sure which one it is. I think the DJ7 was a little bit of a longer wheelbase, whereas this one seems to be a little bit of a shorter wheelbase. Not exactly sure. I think this is a DJ5. I could be wrong once again. I'm not super up on what the designations are for postal Jeeps in all honesty, even though I do like them. Should probably get more up on that, but that's pretty much what this Jeep actually is. And so as such, now without further ado, let's go ahead and just do a little bit of a walk around of this Jeep and cover all of the external quirks and features. And one of the most interesting things about this Jeep that I really like are the turn signals. The turn signals are external mounted just right on the fender right there. We can see a little bit of a reflector right there as well and it's just kind of guarded by a little bit of a brush guard or something like that for like bushes and whatnot. I love how that looks. It's just not aerodynamic at all and I absolutely love it. We can see there's some hood pins right here that kind of no, they don't really go up much anymore, frankly put. I don't think you can really put them back on the hood. I don't think, I think they were originally meant to like stretch out or something like that kind of thing. Actually, I should probably be really careful when I'm touching the car. I got to make sure I don't get tetanus or nothing like that. It is a little bit more rusty than not. But, but I do like the uh, hood latches as well. I ain't going to lie. Oh, you know, racing car spec, of course, glass headlights as cars should have. My car has glass headlights. Glass headlights are like the best. All cars should have glass headlights so they don't fade over time, and this one has them as well. I'm honestly surprised they're not smashed out since some not-so-nice people decided to smash out all of the other pieces of glass in the car. We can see one, two, three, four, five, five spoke uh, Jeep grill, and a nice little bit of a tow bumper right here that looks like it's uh, actually quite a bit newer than not. This is probably how they towed it here or something like that kind of thing, not exactly sure. But it's a nice bumper. I think that could withstand a good crash. Nice steelies. Actually, not so bad tires on this car, frankly. But a little bit old, but they've actually got some decent tread. Let's go ahead and cover this side. Now, we can see the... Um, I was about to say that's the fuel door, but I actually don't think it is. I think the fuel door is in the back, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. I actually don't know what this is, in all honesty. I could try to open it up. Maybe I'll try to open it up. I've got my uh, Kershaw Speed Safe with me today. I, I don't know what this is, in all honesty. I'm going I'm to go and try to open it up. Let's see. It's just like a little bit of a vent or something like that kind of thing. Interesting. I'll go ahead and close that up. Go ahead and uh, close my knife back up as well. I didn't realize there was like a vent there. So I guess you can open that up if you want to. So you can get like some air on your legs and stuff like that kind of thing. Pretty cool if I do say so myself. There's the door on this side. And sadly, the mirror has been smashed out. Does this door open? Let's go ahead and find out. It does indeed open. Not very well if I do say so myself, but we can see there's a little bit of a tray on the inside for all the mail. There's also some area underneath that we can see like the gear shift right there and whatnot. This is an automatic car from what I know. At least I believe it would be a three speed. I'm gonna go ahead and close this back up now. And just continue taking a look at the rest of the car. We can see uh, this window and this window and this window. They're all smashed out, sadly. Just says bread right here with a little bit of a sort of like little uh, Grim Reaper sticker right there. Maybe it was like Grim Reaper bread or something like that. Maybe that's what the bakery was named. I have no clue in all honesty. We can see this tire is getting a little bit flat. Moving on to the back. We can see some of the lights have been smashed as much as I hate to say. The glass back here also has been smashed and people have been ditching trash back here as well. Not very cool. Trash in the car as well. No license plate, but we can see the license plate light would be right here. Or it actually, it is right there. We can see all the turn signals and whatnot. It looks fantastic in my perspective. I love how Postal Jeeps look. It's just such a uh, utilitarian look. I'm just such a big fan of it. Just says AM General right there. And we can see the back does indeed open up just like that, which is pretty nice if I do say so myself. Very wide opening. You know, I could fit a lot of groceries in here. I could probably even put some jump seats in here or something like that kind of thing. I like postal Jeeps. Let's go ahead and close this back up. It doesn't close very smoothly. You got to open that and then close it once again to actually get it to close properly. I have heard the ride in postal Jeeps is absolutely terrible. I don't care. I still want to own one, but I believe this is the fuel right here or where the fuel was supposed to go. There's no fuel cap or anything like that. So water's been getting in the fuel tank as well, which means that that would probably have to be replaced as well. If somebody wanted to restore this, it's, I don't even, I don't think this is really restorable in all honesty. I hate to say it. 
it's good lawn art. It's good lawn art. Moving on to this side, we can just see, it says US mail rural carrier right there. And it just says Black Flea Market. Maybe that's where this Jeep was. I'm not exactly sure. And then I assume this is another, um, what's the right way of putting it? another vent right there for like your legs or something like that is there. Yeah, there's like a little bit of a vent inside there. We can actually see that. But we can see this side, it's not in nearly as good condition as the other side. The rust is starting to eat through. Down here, down here, is they've used some sort of a, no, that's actually just glass right there, actually. It's just glass that's kind of fallen into the door. It's not in the greatest shape, to say the least. Taking a look at the inside of the fender, we can see the inside of the fender, it's a little bit rusty. The paint's kind of peeling off. It's not the worst, it's not great either. The frame itself is actually in not bad shape. Let's take a look at the underside of the car real quick. And the frame itself, yeah, it's actually not in terrible shape. It's just the other, everything else about the car that's in terrible shape, frankly put. Like the frame, it's not really all that rusty. We can see it's got all the engine components there and everything like that. I think I'll pop the hood in just a minute. But you know, as a whole, the underside of the Jeep, it's not bad. It's just everything else about the Jeep that's in bad condition, which is a shame. It's really the frame is the only good part. You can see somebody decided to smash up the uh, oil cooler or radiator right there. I think this is the oil cooler. Let's just go ahead and pop this just real quick, if I can, and take a look at the engine. We can see it's a four banger. And uh, yeah, really not too much going on. Underpowered as hell. I think it's got like 60, 75 horsepower, something like that kind of thing. Alternator right there is carbureted. Brake booster right there, and that brake booster looks exactly the same as the brake booster on my <laughs> on my uh, 1990 Chevy Suburban, which is pretty funny. Somebody decided to shove a helmet in here. Not exactly sure why. This does actually have a battery in it. I don't know how old that battery is. Probably much older than not. I doubt this car would start, frankly. But but who knows? Maybe it would. Maybe you could get it to turn over. Nobody seems to have messed with anything under the hood too much, but it's not in great shape it's not in great shape this would need a lot of love and care to get running in any way shape or form frankly put and i don't have to know how to do that let's go ahead and try to sit this back down now if i can there we go just like that try to sit it down as nice as i can but uh didn't want to mess my hand up too much but you know that's pretty much all there is to the actual look of the outside of the jeep itself i do like some of the quirks and features such as the of course five spoke grill the uh glass headlights right here the fuel filler being in the back that's pretty cool and the external headlights that's pretty cool as well and i'd have to say my favorite my absolute favorite quirk and feature of this car is of course the sliding doors you, you can't beat it and of course oh okay it does lock it, do, it does lock i guess it doesn't really lock very well there we go i got it to lock but but the sliding doors, so dang cool. I love sliding doors, and they're one of the main reasons why I <laughs> am such a big fan of Postal Jeeps, in all honesty. The sliding doors apparently do weigh, like, 50 pounds or something like that, and they make the entire Postal Jeep, like, so top-heavy. Apparently, of course, this model Jeep is already insanely top-heavy, but apparently the sliding doors make them even more top-heavy, which makes these Postal Jeeps even more rollover, um... What's the right way of putting it? They make them even more plausible. Yeah, these Jeeps are even more easy to roll over than like other normal civilian Jeeps from the same time period, which is pretty wild if I do say so myself. I remember reading an article online about postal Jeeps and somebody had one, they like took it to Moab or something like that kind of thing. And then they sold it and they found out like that, like two days later or something like that, <laughs> the person they sold it to had rolled it over. <laughs> <laughs> just just too funny uh, I mean, like sucks of course because uh, you, lost, you just lost a postal jeep but uh it's i guess they are easier than not to roll over you got to be careful when driving one of these things that is for sure but let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the jeep just a little bit real quick we can see of course there's a mail tray right there of course on the what would normally be the driver's side we see the steering wheel is right here there's a dome light switch right there everything is a very nice tactile switch which is pretty nice if i do say so myself Oh, that doesn't really want to move. Just has some like little warning labels, like you got to wear your seatbelt and safety check and unleaded fuel only and whatnot kind of thing. There's the uh, like fan and stuff right there. Here's the parking brake, gear shift. This would be a three speed, I believe. A uh, three speed automatic that is. And we could see, I guess this is probably how they started the car. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure in all honesty. Um, see a little bit of a what is this this is like oil or something like that not exactly sure maybe uh, i guess that would probably be temperature or oil i really cannot tell in all honesty speedometer right here somebody smashed the speedometer sadly and uh yeah that's pretty much all that's going on 
for the uh, actual dash right here. It looks like there might have been a radio in here at one point. There are some visors in here which are in decent condition. There's the dome light. Whoever had this beforehand wired up some speakers and we can see there's a little bit of a uh, thing right there as well for some airflow and whatnot. I will admit with all the air, with all the uh, windows smashed out, the airflow through the car is really, really, really good. Definitely a little bit hard to get warm in, I will admit, but that's not really a good thing because there's no windows. I don't know how you would have rolled down the windows in this car before it having been, before the windows having been smashed, because there is like a thing right there poking out for the window to be like rolled up and stuff, but I don't know how you would have rolled it up, frankly put. But just taking a look at like the um, back of this, we can just see a bunch of people have been like leaving trash everywhere and whatnot. It's not in great shape. Well, I think there really is only one more thing left for me to do. And I think that is for me to smoke a cigarette in this smashed up, abandoned 40 year old postal Jeep. And I think it's time for me to let you guys know how smoking a cigarette in a smashed up, abandoned 40 year old postal Jeep actually is. I hope nobody drives by and gets mad at me. <laughs> I hope nobody drives by and gets mad at me for sitting in the postal Jeep. If they do, I'll just be like, it is what it is kind of thing, bro. It's abandoned. I'm not doing anything to it. I'm just making a video about it. But uh, I do suppose without further ado, before I go ahead and actually hop into the car, and before I quite possibly get yelled at by somebody driving by for sitting in this Jeep when it's not mine, I do suppose before all of that, I should probably go ahead and uh, introduce you guys to the cigarettes I'm going to be smoking today, or just cigarette I'm going to be smoking today. So I'm only going to be smoking one cigarette today. Today I'm going to be smoking an American Spirit Dark Blue Cigarette, which is a cigarette I've been enjoying a little bit more so than not as of late. I'm going to go and get the pack of cigarettes all opened up. Go and get one of the cigarettes out. Go and get it in my mouth. And now without further ado, let's go ahead, get my sunnies back on, and let's go ahead and... Ooh, how do I want to position my camera? I could. I could position it outside of the car. Like that. There we go. Position my camera just like that. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> That's literally perfect. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get one of my American Spirit Dark Blue cigarettes all lit up. And let's go ahead and get to smoking a cigarette in a smashed up, abandoned 40 year old postal Jeep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Due to the fact that this Jeep has no wind, uh, has no windows though, it is a little bit more windy in here than not, I do want to acknowledge. So I am struggling to, uh, to uh, light this up a little bit more so than not, but let's give it another go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? There we go. Took me a minute, but I got it all lit up. And right off the bat, I gotta admit, this is so weird to sit in. Like the seat is like kind of, um, it's not, oh, there's a wasp. Oh, oh, bro, don't come at me. I don't, I don't like wasp, y'all. All right. But the seat is like misaligned with the steering wheel, like, I'm used to cars having like the steering wheel like right in front of where the driver's seat is. No, this steering wheel, the, the, the seat is off to one side. Like you're not really sitting in front of the steering wheel. You're sitting like off to the side of the steering wheel, which is really, really, really weird. The pedals are really weird as well. Not, oh my God. I don't know where that yellow jacket just went. I don't know if he left. It's not very nice though, I will admit. Oh, I found the VIN for the truck. Oh, and it's a DJ5. Okay, see, I know this is a DJ5L to be specific. I found that. Okay. I'll show you all that in just a couple minutes, but I'm off camera right now. Where'd that, where'd that yellow jacket go or wasp go or whatever? Did he leave? I don't know. I hope he did. You know, this truck has a supposed 84,000 miles on it. Not too bad if I do say so myself. Probably has 184,000 miles on it if I had to guess what the condition it's in, but it also wouldn't surprise me if it's only got 84,000 miles on it. This truck would do a lot of stop and go, so hard miles, hard miles to say the least. And it was just so weird. Like, I love the style of Postal Jeeps. I think they look really cool. I really like the sliding doors and whatnot. But man, the steering wheel is literally misaligned. The pedals suck. Like I've literally 
like I'm sitting here and then I've got to have my legs to this side and then I've got to steer to like this side. This sucks. This is terrible. This is a horrible driving position. I see why people roll this car over because it's a pain in the ass to drive. Like, man. Like, I... This would take some getting used to, frankly, but this would really take some getting used to driving-wise. Let me go ahead and grab my camera real quick. And let me just show y'all how bad it really is. Because, okay, so I'm sitting right here. The Jeep is over... Or, uh, sorry, I'm sitting right here. The steering wheel is right here. The pedals are right here. This is, this is terrible. This is horrible. <laughs> this is a horrible seating position. Terrible, absolutely terrible seating position. What about a card though? Oh, I can't grab that card out. Well, we can see safety stuff right there. See all that stuff right there. The VIN is right there. We can see this is a DJ5. So I was right about that. I thought this was DJ5 rather than DJ7. It is a DJ5. We can see the VIN is 1UTBF00A. Ooh, I think that's a J. I can't. No, that's a seven. Uh, D S zero 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 seven seven three. So that's what the VIN is. If you guys want to run the VIN on this uh, truck and see what's going on with it, feel free to do that. Of course. I have not run the VIN on this truck though, and there's another wasp. Pop out real quick. I really ain't trying to get stung by a wasp today. It is not fun because they just keep stinging. <sighs> not that I've ever been stung by a wasp, thankfully, but uh, that's why I'm so careful. I want to make sure I'm not stung by one. <sighs> you know, the driving position is just so weird. It's just so weird. I will admit, though. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That wasp is, it's not happy with me. That wasp is like, bro, you're hanging out in my abode. This is not chill. It hasn't decided to sting me or come at me into, to any real degree, but it, it's wondering why I'm there. But um, smoking a cigarette in this Jeep, you know, it's not so bad. I'm not really willing to close the door just because there's a wasp coming at me and I don't want to be trapped in the car with the wasp too. But, uh, you know, it's not so bad to smoke a cigarette in. Let's go ahead. Oh, make sure. Oh, that's that's why there's a wasp nest in there. That's why. You know what? <laughs> I think I've accomplished my goal. I think I've smoked a cigarette in the Jeep. I don't know if I'm willing to sit in the Jeep again, frankly put. <laughs> I didn't even notice the wasp nest until just now. Yeah. As we can see where I'm pointing right there, there is a wasp nest. Yeah. Uh, that explains the issue. That explains why there's wasps in the car. That makes sense. That makes sense in all honesty. Well, I can say, though... Postal Jeeps, they're not so bad to smoke cigarettes in. They seem like a pain in the ass to drive. Loki still want to try driving one. Uh, Loki still want to own one, even if it's just for a little bit. But uh, they do seem like a pain in the ass to drive. Really seems like a really awkward driving experience as a whole. I mean, like, you got your seat in one area, the, 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 the steering wheel is in another, and then the pedals are in another area. It really does not make any sense at all. It really is just so weird, frankly, but it's just such a weird driving, uh, driving, well, not experience. I haven't driven this car, so I can't say that, but it's just such a weird driving, what's the right way of putting it? Driving position, I guess? It's so odd. It's a horrible design, absolutely terrible design, which is not really a big surprise. It's a vehicle made for a government contract, <laughs> I hate to say. Um, it's not like the... Grumman LLVs are really any better from what I've heard. But uh, yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible driving position. Horrible, absolutely horrible. You know what would be cool though? Take one of these, or not take one of these, but take a, um, like a civilian one that's left-hand drive and then like put the top on one of these and then weld it onto the civilian one. I don't even know if that would work. I doubt it would, but that would be interesting. But yeah, terrible, 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 horrible seating position. Lots of wasps inside. This Jeep in specific, not the greatest to smoke in just because of the wasps. But I will admit, if there were no wasps, it would not be so bad to smoke in. The seat actually is surprisingly comfortable. And the position of it as a whole, not so bad either, especially since I'm right-handed and this car is right-hand drive. So I can just have my arm out the window very easily, just ashen and everything like that kind of thing. You know, if I was driving this car, I would not mind 
smoking a cigarette in it while I'm driving at all kind of things. Some cars, they can be a little bit awkward to smoke cigarettes in while you're driving. This car, not so much. And it is a car that was, uh, well, designed in like the 1950s, so that is kind of to be expected now, isn't it? You know. I'm not really willing to hop back in the car just due to the wasp nest, but, but I'm actually kind of glad I didn't notice that until I did, just simply because I don't know if I would have been willing to smoke a cigarette in the car if I had noticed that. But, uh... I am glad that I got to sit in it and smoke a little bit of a cigarette in it. So uh, I did smoke a cigarette in, in it, but uh, not a full cigarette, not a full cigarette. That's okay though, that's okay though. I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, as said, this Jeep, it's smashed up. It's not in the greatest condition. It's been sitting here for a couple months all smashed up it's 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 probably gonna get crushed as much as i hate to say it really is a shame really is a shame i love old postal jeeps i think they look really cool i know they drive from what i've heard horribly i know the driving experience probably sucks i've heard they're not comfortable at all i've heard they're one of the most uncomfy cars you can drive i know now from speaking personal experience that the driving position sucks as well but uh i still like them i still like them and i still am interested in owning one but uh I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon and I'm certainly not gonna own this one there ain't no way I could make it work there ain't no way I could make it work it really is just a nice piece of lawn art that's really all this truck is in all honesty as much as I hate to put it as much as I hate to say it well I've only got a little bit of my cigarette all left so I do think I'm gonna go and just take one more hit And I'm gonna just go ahead and stub this out on the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cigarette butt on my car just so I don't forget it or anything like that. So I make sure I throw it away after this video. I can't be littering or nothing like that. Just put it right there, won't fly away or nothing like that. And, well, let's go ahead and do the outro now. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun to just show you guys this abandoned, smashed up, 40 year old postal jeep that's just sitting here at a park near me glad nobody drove in to get mad at me for sitting in the car i will admit i certainly cannot complain about that but uh yeah it's smashed up it's abandoned if you cut yourself on this car you'd want a tetanus shot to say the least and it's probably gonna get crushed but i'm glad that i got to smoke a cigarette in it before it quite possibly gets crushed and i'm glad that I got to smoke a cigarette in it in general and find out just how good or just how bad the seating position of a old postal Jeep actually is. And I'm glad I found out how good smoking a cigarette in an old postal Jeep actually is too. I'd have to say it's a pretty good car to smoke cigarettes in. Pretty good as a whole. Definitely a very awkward seating position though, to say the least. Well, I certainly do hope I've given this car a good send off. As said, I don't think this car's got too much time remaining, but uh, I'm glad I got to see it when it's still here. I don't think I have anything else to say. And so as such, without further ado, I do think I'm probably gonna go and end the video right here. Certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching my video where I smoked a cigarette in a smashed up abandoned 40 year old postal Jeep. If you guys have enjoyed watching this video, of course, please make sure to well, like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my PO box, and my second channel all in the description down below. Go check it all out. You know, thank you so much for watching y'all. Till the next one, stay safe and peace and have a great one. Yes, sir, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying.